has the internet ruined movies? It's an honestly interesting question, and it's one that you might have your own particular take on. I have my take on it. To some extent, I think yes. <laughs> I very much think yes, that the internet has ruined movies, uh, largely because it's taken away the intrigue and the desire and the fun. Now, back in the olden days of the internet, right, or the golden days of the internet, people would very much coalesce around a show. Sunday Night Game of Thrones was a big thing on Twitter. People were known for like having to mute the uh, anyone talking about it simply because they didn't want to get spoiled. Nowadays, we get a couple shows like that, but nowhere near as much as we used to. Movies used to kind of be the same thing. People would get excited, go see them talk about them. Now it's just kind of like people rushing out to the theater to get a reaction. And then that's really about it. There's not a lot of aftermath conversation. Now, Barbie and Oppenheimer were the two this summer that really had that, but were those organic or were those because of the ongoing strike? And there was really nothing else anyone could talk about. I'll give you an example. Example, look at uh, Collider, okay? Collider used to be this massive popular podcast network, all these shows, all of these personalities, everybody knew them, everybody liked them, everybody watched them. Then they got rid of it all. Why? Because it wasn't profitable enough anymore. Why is that? Because the landscape changed, the medium changed. A bunch of talking heads sitting around discussing the daily news isn't really going to bring in that many people anymore, especially when your biggest star, John Campia, has opted to bail out and start his own thing. So they just got rid of everybody. And now you got Campia and you got Christian Harloff, and it's kind of about it, right? Coming out of that group, uh, everyone else has just kind of moved on, it feels like. That's one side of it when it comes to talking about the daily news. I mean, <laughs> you have to clickbait these days in order to get anything. You know, curiosity will get the click, but so will the outright negative headlines. Look at any of the trades, who, by the way, are all owned by the same goddamn company. Variety, Hollywood Reporter, uh, Deadline, IndieWire, The Wrap, tons of others, are owned by Penske Media, who very much control the narrative in a number of ways. You don't believe me? Look at what their conversations are surrounding the strikes. Anyway, those guys control a lot of the narrative online for the news that they get that's more closely related to the studios or bigger projects because they're considered a more reputable source. But even that comes across now as being very vapid and, and, and vain in regards of just doing whatever they can to get the scoops in order to get ahead of the information. And I do think a lot of that is planted by the industry, but the scoops and all the leaks and everything else really take away from the intrigue and the excitement and the fun of it. And that's also largely where parts of the internet have gone. The last couple years, really since Spider-Man No Way Home, to be honest with you, it has not been fun to talk about movies as much because everything is a scoop, everything is a leak. Everything that does get scooped or leaked or revealed is largely seen as terrible, is largely seen as god-awful, is largely seen as bad. And what that does is that permeates in the mind of the people who watch the movies. And the people who watch the movies are then gonna go in to see this with that already in their brain. So to them, they're already gonna be like, well, this shit sucks, why do I even wanna bother watching it? But they're watching it anyway, and then that causes them to have, well, it's a psychological thing where they start looking for all the things that are bad. All the things that they heard were bad, that's what they're looking for. And that ends up being the bigger issue. So, okay. Another thing we need to talk about is the fact that online commentators who have no business really talking about anything from like a technical standpoint or a critical standpoint have found a way to rule the conversation by just calling everything woke or calling everything propaganda or calling everything, you know, whatever. And you guys know exactly who I'm talking about. These are people, some of whom convicted felons selling meth. Some of them never graduated high school. Some of them are just racist, bigoted, misogynistic trolls who've never once taken a film analysis class, never once taken a screenwriting class, never once taken a filmmaking class, never once actually stepped into the arena of what it means to analyze film 
critique film, or I don't know, effing make movies. And these are the people right now that are absolutely dominating the conversation. Why? Because they use negativity to get what they want. <laughs> they, they are able to take it and they're able to twist it and alter it and pervert it in a way that makes you feel like they're out to get you. And by they, I mean the studios, right? Everything is woke propaganda, CRT, everything is just nonsense. And those people have massive voices and massive platforms. And it's very weird to see them actually find themselves in this position of power because almost everything they say can be, well, debunked. I've done a bunch of it. Other people have done a bunch of it, but it doesn't matter. It has absolutely no impact. The name of the game on YouTube is money, right? And money comes from clicks and money comes from views and subscriptions and super chats and things like that. So the more hyperbolic, the more over the top, the more crazy you are, especially with your commentary is going to end up getting you more effing attention. And that's just the truth of it. So you've got all of that. You've got the grifters, you've got the websites that are trying to push negative hyperbolic headlines all the time using whatever synonym they can for flop or bomb or whatever. Even though Blue Beetle, for example, number one at the box office, $25 million, dethroned Barbie, still considered a flop in the trade's eyes. It's like movies just can't exist. And that's the biggest problem. They just don't exist in the way that they should. I've noticed a trend online right now where a lot of people are going back and finding old VHS tapes. Like they're going to thrift stores and buying them up. They're buying old CRTs on eBay and old VCRs on eBay in order to watch these old VHSs. And I'm just like, why? Why is that happening? Why is that a thing? The only thing I can really gather, to be honest with you, is that it has everything to do with nostalgia. Because nostalgia, according to my friend Chris the Bipolar Jedi, is one hell of an opiate. And it is. Our world is changing, right? Millennials are hitting their 40s. Uh, the boomers have control. The boomers are largely ruining everything based upon this very twisted and very untrue mindset of what it was like for them as kids and that is being manipulated to some sense with entertainment because pop culture nostalgia what we saw when we were children the way it made us feel etc 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 is coming back in a way that is is dangerous in regards to the level of copium what i mean by that largely is think about it like this what you've got is a whole bunch of dudes that are always like, well, these movies were great when I was younger. These movies never had a political message. These movies were fantastic. They weren't woke. They weren't whatever. Did, did they not look at like Ellen Ripley, right? For the people who freak out about Ray Skywalker, okay? Daisy Ridley in the lead role of that. But they're like, man, I sure as hell love me Alien. I love me Terminator. You know, <laughs> I like Underworld. I like Resident Evil. You know, movies with badass heroin leads. You know, movies that had a political agenda, that had messages they wanted to send. Entertainment, not even entertainment, literature. From ever since the very first book, the very first story, has an agenda. It's trying to tell a story, present a perspective, a narrative that's largely mired in the author's own experiences. That's how this stuff works. And one of the reasons why storytelling is as effective as it is, is because guess what? People can relate to it. That's a big factor. So when you've got all of these chuds and these grifters online that are trying to play that nostalgia card, it's for the exact same reason the boomers are always talking about the culture war. It's just because they want to go back to this fictionalized version of the 1950s from when they were children, post the war. And things were on the upswing and things were optimistic and good and grand and great. And here we are, you know, 80 years later and life kind of fucking sucks. So we go back to what made us feel good when we were kids. And that's the warm, sweet embrace of film. But now that's tainted. Now that's bad. Now that's something we shouldn't engage in, something we shouldn't enjoy because it's all woke. It's all political. It's all a narrative. It's all an ideology. It's all an agenda. You guys starting to pick up on the bullshit pattern here? It makes it difficult to be an absolute true film fan and have these conversations on a nightly basis because you can't get away from it. 
you just can't get away from it. So I'll be honest with you guys. I watch fewer movies now than I've ever done before. I try to bring myself to watch them. I have trouble. I have a lot of trouble. I dread going to the theater now when I used to be excited. I dread seeing the online reviews and online commentary around movies because I know that certain things are going to trigger certain people because they need it to trigger them in order for them to get a paycheck. Completely psychotic rants about things that have nothing to do with movies. Six hour reviews of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness where the concept of why the lights red and green were reversed uh, to showcase a different reality was something that was a point of contention, uh, albeit a, a simple explanation to convey that to the audience in a way that is understandable. The, people who have no <laughs> idea what they're talking about dominating the conversation. And on top of that, you've got scoopers who just rush to ruin everything. You've got uh, people who want to do every single minute detail in something, and they get all the access to it early from the studios and the networks that want to make sure that all of these properties get uh, a whole bunch of attention online, and they spoil it for everybody, and, and they put it out there, and they don't care because they get paid. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. As an online commentator about film, I don't know what to do. So maybe you guys have an idea, and I'm curious to know it. Let me know down in the comment section what you think, legitimately, honestly. Is there a pathway forward, or are we all just absolutely fucked when it comes to this, something we love quite a bit? I'll see you guys later.